Hey, this is Bill. I'm glad you came back. So, I was perusing through my favorite meat market. Link down below, Wasi's. Thanks, you guys, for helping me out. Um, and I noticed they had some really great chicken wings. So I'm like, okay, what haven't I done in a while because it's a hassle? And how can I make life easier? So I got myself some really good, nice big wings. I'm going to tell you some secrets. One is, it's poultry. So we want to really be good about cross-contamination and what we touch and how we keep our hands clean. Second of all, we want these really dry. So believe it or not, I have these really old towels. And I usually use them for when I'm cooking turkey. So basically nothing else touches them but the poultry, the turkey. And then it goes in the you know washing machine actually, or in the sink with some sudsy water, Clorox. They don't get clean anymore, but I know I'm not going to contaminate something else. So what I want to do, I want to get these bad boys in here. And paper towels just don't, don't do the trick, unfortunately. So I want to get these nice and padded dry. Why these are thinking. And so, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the right thing and I'm going to dirty more bowls than I usually do. But it, it's, for, it's for a good reason. Alright. Alright, so why this is sitting here getting all draining, and I got my paper towel. Now, what I want to do in prep. I'm going to grab my, my basket to my air fryer, because air fryer is the best way to make chicken wings. I, I, actually, I can't say I like grilled wings, but it's totally different. They're not, they're not buffalo wings. Um, and deep fried, you got to do them just right. You know, there's only one place I like to get my real chicken wings from. So anyway, so I just want to make sure I get all the edges and all the bottom, and I'm going to do that over the sink, so you have to excuse me for a minute. And believe it or not, that's a trick I learned rather recently. Alright, so trick number two, because this is all full of tricks, this is how we're going to make it all work, is I'm going to take some of these wings out of here and I'm going to put them in a bowl. Huge man, these are like monsters. And what I don't want to do is overload my air fryer. Grab another paper towel. I was clearing too much stuff off the counter for today. All right, so what I want to do? We want some salt. Remember, there's no such thing as healthy chicken wings. Yeah, it's great that you're not putting in the deep fryer, but we still need some salt in here. Wasn't much, just enough. Okay, so what we're going to do, is I'm going to put the flats on the, on the bottom. And the drums you can put kind of upright against the edges. I'm just going to lean them. And we don't want them touching. And I should have gotten that triple, double, quadruple, extra large air fryer because it would certainly make this a whole lot easier. Um, but I try not to go too crazy with my chicken wings when I'm eating them.
So what I'm going to do now, because the air fryer unfortunately makes a little bit of noise, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take this out of the room. So I'm going to be right back and I'm going to show you how we're going to make it. And remember, we're going to do 360 degrees in my air fryer for 12 minutes, and then we're going to flip them around, and I'll, I'll and then we're going to uh, another 12 minutes. So it's pretty simple. So I'll be right back as soon as I get this plugged in and set up. Alright, so i got my air fryer running. Got that 12 minutes, 360 degrees. They get flipped around. Remember, because they're not touching each other, so it should cook really quick. Um, you know, I guess it, if you ever do this and you're having like a party and you want a bunch of people eating wings at the same time, what I do is take a uh, big baking sheet, put tin foil on it, and uh, it'll just keep the baking sheet clean if you want. If you don't mind washing the baking sheet, that's fine. Uh, toss them, uh, put tin over them, throw them in a warm oven, and the wings will stay really, really fresh. And also, what's really good about that, you have the advantage of um, that sauce is going to kind of cook into it. In fact, one of the restaurants I like to go, one of the things they know is that uh, they toss my wings and uh, you know everything goes under the salamander, the heat light while we're waiting for it to be served for the server to come and get it. The server always waits that extra minute so they sit under the heat lamp and let that sauce soak back into it. Okay, so what I got here is I've got four tablespoons of butter that I'm melting. I'm going to make some really interesting, and I'm going to put a little twist on this, I decided this morning, because that's the way I, I am, okay? So, I like garlic wings, but a lot of places they won't make garlic wings hot. I don't understand that, because really, it's the same process. But what I got is I got about a, a little more than a tablespoon of, of freshly chopped up garlic. I'm going to put in my four tablespoons of butter. Ooh, love that smell. I just want to get this garlic really kind of softened and fragrant. I will tell you, making hot sauce is really great because it really cleans all your pans. All those stains in the bottom are gone. I mean, I could probably just toss this on my wings and it'd be fine. But you know, being from the state of New York, I, I gotta have my buffalo sauce, okay? And I gotta tell you, I just think the perfect combination is Frank's hot sauce. Frank's hot sauce is just the right heat, um, and I like them really pretty toasty when we go out. But at home, you know, I kind of scale back a little bit, probably because I'm not drinking pitchers of beer, right? Um, the other thing is, you'll know, is a lot of restaurants use like margarines and, 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 and fats to, to cook or to make their uh, hot sauce out of. And I think butter is a much better, much better option. Anyway, I don't see anything turning brown yet. So I think we're just about good. Now, the thing about this sauce is, I want to get this going because it can certainly sit. Um, it's just going to kind of absorb all those flavors, so there's nothing wrong with it sitting. Um, and it doesn't have to be hot because the wings are going to be super hot. Alright, so now what i got, got half a cup of Frank's hot sauce. Ooh. Ooh. I have to use a wooden spoon so it doesn't melt it. Just kidding. Now, I don't know if you've ever made hot sauce before, 
but if you ignore and leave it on the heat, it gets like really kind of thick and funky. So you just want to mix this together and just let it heat through real nice and slow. And if you overdo it, you can salvage it by pouring in some more French sauce, hot sauce, but for the most part, um, if you get it too messed up, it's probably time to start over again. Oh yeah. Love that smell. And, the, and you know it's funny because I've never thought about doing the garlic thing. Um, like I said, I've had them in restaurants, but what always ticked me off was that they always make a mild garlic sauce. I'm like, what's that? I like a little heat. Um, so we're just going to let this sit. Uh, basically, I've got just a couple minutes. I'm going to flip the, flip the wings over. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how we're going to toss these bad boys all around. So we're going to see you back in just a few more minutes. Alright, I did this in two batches because I had so many wings and my air fryer is kind of old and small. And actually I was looking online at air fryers, so it might be a Christmas present. So I just want to get these all out. They're all nice and crunchy on the outside. First batch I've had in the oven, just a 300 degree oven just to keep them going. Okay. Sucker is really hot. Alright, so now I got these lovely wings. Oh, I forgot that was nailed on the other Ooh, that was toasty. Alright. So what are we gonna do? Well, got a tool here. The sauce is perfect. You see when I get that all poured out. So I'm going to get some wings. And I have a big tossing bowl. These are, this isn't really the bowl to toss in, but same concept because you don't have to show off and fling uh, sauce everywhere. Which I've done a time or two. Okay, so we're going to do a few at a time. Like I said, I'm just going to get some of this good old sauce. It's really beautiful. Make sure we get the garlic off the bottom. <laughs> and if you have too much sauce in here, it's okay, because guess what? It'll be ready for the next round. So I just want to take my, my tongs, just want to get these nice and quite a nice and hot. Get them all coated. Let's burn my nose a little bit, that's a good sign. Sure. Yeah. The the reason why it's cool to fl to kind of flip them around the air is because it really does kind of make sure you get them all coated. Um, this works pretty darn good too. You know. I'm open for recommendations. Maybe you know, you know what air fryers are the the greatest and latest. Uh, please let me know.
Always better to have more sauce than not enough, so make sure you follow the recipe. So can't you just see serving these up to your friends and have them go, ah, where'd you get this recipe? And it's amazing, just time these have sat here, I've seen some of them, the juices, the sauce has really soaked in a little bit. And that's, that's what you want to see, you know. I'm going to take this one, give them another deep dish coat in there. Get some of that garlic on there. Oh. You could only smell this. So in all honesty, isn't that exactly what you want wings to look like? Isn't that perfect? Isn't that beautiful? And like I said, you know that they were so hot, and you get them right out of the oven or out of the deep air fryer, and you, you, you get that sauce on, it's already starting to soak in. You know, the garlic and the hot sauce and everything is just looking really, really good. Um, this is the way I like to do it. I know a lot of places they take the wings after they toss them and dump it all in a big basket. I don't want all the extra sauce because it really kind of takes the crispiness out. I want I want these nice and crisp. So it's better to have them, you know, nice and fresh. By the way, these heat up just fine. You know, throw them in a, have them wrapped up in a piece of tin. Uh, put them on a cookie sheet so just in case they leak. I hate that, you know, they get a little tear in the tin. Anyway, or aluminum foil. Anyway, um, you know, uh, low and slow, do like a 300 so they don't all get stuck to the tin or together. But um, I hate to say it, but I'm really drooling. These look really good. These are going to be a great, great little uh, lunch for me today. Just can't wait to dive in. <clears throat> anyway, so everyone has their preference. I like to do a homemade ranch dressing. Um, I'm going to attach a link to it. Or tag it on the end either way so that you know how to make it. Some people prefer blue cheese. I like a good blue cheese that I make myself um, which is a lot of work so I usually stick with a ranch. Don't forget carrots and celery for all your friends. And um, you got to make these and try these. You'll be in love. If you don't like the garlic just leave it out. But all I can say is you need to subscribe, you need to comment, hit the notification bell and have fun. Get in the kitchen and cook something to really impress yourself. Have a good day and I'll see you next time. So the problem is, is that most people think it's too hard to make dressing. I do not use dressing from a jar or a bottle. They all kind of mediocre, mediocre stink. So I make ranch dressing. I think this is the easiest, best way to make some ranch dressing. Basically, people think it's really tough to do. I'm going to show you how to make it so easy. And the question I always get is, well, how do you measure a cup of mayonnaise? You've got those piston things, you can fill it up, but there's always air and it's never accurate. First of all, I'm here to tell you that I don't think your numbers have to be exact. You could, I'm going to show you how we're going to do it by displacement. But this is such good ranch dressing. In fact, if I have wings, I make my own. If I have wraps, I make my own. This is just a good way to make a dressing. So first of all, I've got real buttermilk. This is the real McCoy. It's not fat-free buttermilk. Don't know how you can have such a thing, but I think I saw it in the store one day or below for that. So the key to this 
I need, I got a four quart, a one quart, four cup measure. And I'm just gonna put a cup. Cup of butter. That's so perfect. So I said we're going to do this by displacement. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to add mayonnaise until the measuring cone, cup comes up to two cups. Now they're kind of like icebergs, they kind of flow. So you have to be a little conscious of that. It's not going to be exactly up to two when there's actually a cup in here. I've made this many times. Okay. So, I've got my packet. Just put it on top here. And all we're going to do is we're going to incorporate this. Take a fork. Start mixing it in. You don't want to whisk this, you don't want to put it in a blender because what you're going to end up doing is you're going to destroy all the thickening agent. And the cultures in the buttermilk are actually, are enzymes that are actually going to smooth this out for you. So you just want to make sure that after you get everything incorporated, we're going to kind of stir it with our fork just to get the big lumps out. That's really all we have to do. The menu, uh, <clears throat> Hidden Valley says that you need to refrigerate at least half an hour. I find you really need to refrigerate for about an hour. That'll give it plenty of time to kind of thicken and smooth out. So I just have these little, little teeny lumps in here. And it's not dressing lumps. And because you floated the mayonnaise on top of the buttermilk, you're not trying to scrape the mayonnaise from the bottom of the, the measuring cup. I used to do that. I used to put my, my mayonnaise in first and then pour my buttermilk out and I was like, yeah. After a few times I got smart and realized this is the best way to do it. Okay. So like I said, this is easy. We're going to cover it, put it in the refrigerator for an hour.